Stop. Would you guide me? Hello, it is I, Aku, the Bashido King, coming to you live from deep within the pits of talks. Yes, my fellow Bashido warriors, 2015 is coming to a steady end. And I really must say, this year was an interesting one. Interesting in the fact that most of my top 5 list is, in some weird way, nostalgic for some reason. Right, so um, this top 5 list is a collection of all the interesting things or interesting moments I did in 2015. Um, that could be a whole array of different things. It could be picking flowers, watching the sea break upon the seashore, or taking a shit. Yeah taking a shit that could be magical right so i'm looking forward to seeing everyone's um top five so um if you wish to you can leave it down in the comment section below yes number five is my current project that i'm working on called black man v renix if you haven't noticed already it's a parody video based on Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice that's coming out next year. Um, I want to release it, this sketch, probably like a week before the movie drops. Um, yeah, I've been working on this for the past couple of months with my friends. It's been, a, it's been a blast working with them. Yeah, for the project, we just wanted it to be simple. not Nothing too drawn out or too overcomplicated or whatever. Um, we just wanted to just have a, a scenario where they fought for something the most stupidest thing on the planet and the idea was cheese puff number four yes number four is star freaking wars and the reason why I said earlier that this top five list is a collection of nostalgic things, I was being very, very serious about that. It was very nostalgic for me because I remember when I was <laughs> very young and I went to England um, from the pits of Tartarus. Um, I traveled to England with my mom and stuff. And we were staying with my uncle and it was, I think, the release of episode one the one where Anakin was Anakin Skywalker was a little bratty fucker and um, that was the first time I actually went to the movies to be quite honest the, the very first I think it was about seven and it was a magical magical experience and the thing is I went I went to watch Star Wars but the thing about it is that it's really cool about the whole situation is this is this because my my uncle was a fucking Star Wars freak. This guy had all the original trilogies, and he had all of them, and he could tell you every detail down. It was just weird. He was like a Sith Lord, just there, you know, analyzing every fucking detail of the Star Wars. And what he did, he sat me down. My boy, I need for you to watch these trilogies and then we're going to watch the new one i want you to take in and analyze everything because this is fucking amazing and it will change your life forever the dark side the force and whatnot but yeah <laughs> i watch every last <laughs> of the originals and then we went and watched the piece of shit that was the prequels but yeah it was fun. Number three. Yes, number three is Metal Gear Solid 5. Now, Metal Gear Solid 5 would have been higher up on this list. But um, as the year went by, more interesting things came into to my attention. And But that doesn't mean that this is to say that it's not a impactful thing to me this year. Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain was huge for me because I grew up playing the Metal Gear games. I have other friends that, that played these games and you know I, I was a little wee lad and I saw them playing these games and I'm like oh I'm very interested in how things even though it was a little more 
mature for me but as it got older i i was able to understand how to play them and stuff so and then we have um the phantom pain which is impressive and this is one of the best gaming experiences i've had in a very long time because it brought like i said before this this top five list is more mainly going to have a lot of nostalgic things in it and but like i said it felt so nostalgic you know having all these different things but then in the open world setting was just amazing you could do whatever you want um, obviously when I first started to play the game I played stealthy and I played non-lethal and all those stuff because that's what a Metal Gear Solid player does and then they released um, MGO now that's the reason why it took a nosedive to number 3 because MGO for Metal Gear Solid 5 is good but it is not great to the point where it's as good as Metal Gear online too because that was really really good because that had a whole array of um customizations you could customize map no well you could customize game types and stuff you could have it that you just play knives and that those were knives battles in metagear online was the shit and cqc battles and all these different things was the shit and i felt bad because the whole bullshit of konami and kojima and they just fucked everything up nothing but a smoke screen. The Kojima Productions logos went missing and... They played us like a damn fiddle! Give it back! This isn't right, that was yours! You built it, damn it! You Konami bitch! Come on, start talking, bitch! Then get up and start talking! One Punch! Yes, um, it's kind of funny that um, One Punch is not number one because, you know, obviously, pun intended, One Punch. But um, there's a reason why it's number two. But that doesn't mean that it's not a fucking fantastic show. I mean, this show was fucking amazing. And I'm very, very, very happy that I was able to see it and experience it with everybody else you know not coming into it too late or everything like that um when i first start watching it week after week i would anticipate <laughs> on uh, its release and every time i watched it i was not disappointed it had the humor it had the complexity and the thing is a lot of people don't really talk about the complexity of the character himself even though he's kind of like made up as a joke I think he's a very complex character, you know, that, that whole thing where you, you're always looking to be the best that you can be, to know that you have no limits and that you cannot fulfill your full potential and there's no one that really comes close. I mean, Lord, Lord Boros, I think that's his name, Lord Boros came close, well, not really close, but he put at least a little smile on his face to say, okay, uh, he, this guy is not going to be defeated by just one punch. 
Yeah, because you know his um, re- regeneration um, abilities helped him in that match. But in the end, of course, our boy Saitama brings home the cake and gravy. If that's really a thing. Soka. And number one is Dragon Ball Resurrection of F. Fanboys, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know, I know what you're thinking. Why is One Punch number two and Dragon Ball Resurrection of F? is number one i mean that one punch is awesome i I know i know hold up hold up let me let me appeal to your um what's the word let me appeal to your heart okay let let me let me let me explain let me extrapolate what's going on here now the reason why i chose resurrection of f as my number one is because you remember when you were growing up and you were um, counting down the times to go home to watch Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. You guys do not understand how fucking amazing it was to go to watch this in the theater. I, I, my, my, my jaw was dropping and I was just like freaking out. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that I was watching Dragon Ball in the fucking theater. Fool! fucking big grandiose screen in front of me it was fucking amazing i could not imagine ever doing that now that's the reason that's the core that's the foundation that's the logic behind this whole reasoning or rationale that's why i chose dragon ball resurrection of f the experience was the selling point for my choice Yes, we can stand here and we can talk about how fantastic One Punch is and believe me, believe me, it is. But what I'm trying to say is, nostalgia, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. (laughs) Yeah, nostalgia, usually in most situations, nostalgia wins hands down. Hey. If a uh, One Punch comes to an end and you hit me up 20 years from now to say, hey, we're bringing back One Punch in a new and fantastical way with all the different creators that created it and they're going to make a full length feature film, believe me, I want to be in the theater to watch that because, damn. But hey, Dragon Ball has a legacy and Dragon Ball is life, believe me. <laughs> So that's the reason why I chose Dragon Ball Resurrection of F. Um, thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Um, I would hope that everybody would have a blessed new year if you do believe in that stuff. <laughs> but um, I'm a cool. And this was a top five video. I'm out. <laughs>